the history behind throat bass is not only rich, you know, we're talking about Mongolian throat singing, we're talking about Tibetan monks, we're talking about beatboxing. So, so the, the history is rich too, but it's also diverse. Cultures that had very little connection with one another end up using the throat bass, which I think means there's something special about it. So I'm an opera singer, uh, and I love, love beatboxing. I'm not very good at it, uh, but there is one element of beatboxing that my operatic training helped with, and that was finding resonance with the throat bass. So I'm just going to make a couple of, like, a couple concepts, maybe a couple exercises, and hopefully it's useful to something. So a lot of times, I, it's ideal that when we practice, we practice and try to understand what's happening physically with our body. But that can be a very difficult ask for someone who's just starting out and is not used to kind of paying attention to the feelings of our singing and all that stuff. So I love this tool. It's called a spectrogram. And it really, really helps us understand how something sounds. So I was doing throat bass right here. Let's play that. Right. So this, uh, the, the, on the left, all of this, like, um, the bunching up. So the way the spectrogram works is that the brighter, the color, the louder, the frequency, right? So if you look to the left, that's a bunch of lower frequencies kind of really put together, uh, very, very tightly with a lot of, uh, resonance and lower frequencies. And, uh, I'm going to explain why that happens. This is a channel called singing in the MRI. Uh, I, I'm not a, big fan of what the guy has to say in terms of vocal technique, uh, mainly because when he touches on the classical, he's not entirely right, but otherwise he's, he's got his stuff figured out. Um, but this is a really, really interesting and really helpful thing here. So what you're looking at here is an E vowel, and the E is the most forward vowel possible. And it, it because of the small space here, it tends to promote higher frequencies. Like the throat is really, really big in the back, but this, this uh, tight little space here to the roof of the mouth is why those higher frequencies happen. So if we go back to the spectrogram, we can see that the second part of this You see how that was brighter? The second part of that is uh, the E vowel. Now, uh, conversely, um, if we do, if we bring the tongue back, which is what he says opera is, that's not true. Opera is not bringing the tongue back. That's uh, absolutely not the way you want to do it. Uh, but it actually works really well for our purposes. So when we, when we bring our tongue back, two things happen. One, we have this like space here, which helps promote lower frequencies. And we also have a, a pressure on the larynx. So the larynx is going down. This is not good for singing. This is you can like the sound and that's fine, but it's not ergonomic. It's not efficient. Um, but when we're dealing with throat bass, it actually doesn't really matter, uh, which is interesting. So the beginning of what we're looking at here is the tongue going back and down. And you can hear the immediate difference between when I go from one to the other. Um, and the in both cases, my tongue is really, really, really wide. Um, and that's something that uh, has to do with the soft palate. So let's look at that. So this is a, a, another shot of the larynx and, and vocal track, right? So this right here, this is the soft palate. Um, if you lower it, it will, it will uh, sound way more nasal. So... <laughs> Right, so you can get that kind of nasty sound, and the reason why that works is because this, it, instead of uh, hold on, instead of the air going through the mouth like this, it's going through the nasal cavity, which is a bunch of smaller stuff anyway, and so it sound, tends to sound strident to us when we do it. Um, but if we lift our soft palate, and we we bring this tongue 
down to lower the larynx. Not like insanely, uh, but we can do it a little bit. Um, that's going to give us uh, more lower frequencies because we're going to have the uh, oral uh, the, the, the thing, the, the, the space in the mouth, which tends to promote lower resonance, um, and which is what we want in throat bass, right? So, but you definitely want this soft palate lifted. Now, the caveat here, right, the thing that can get in the way is when this, when this tongue goes too far down, you can actually, um, your soft palate will lower. What this image doesn't show very well is that there is the forward part, like the top part of the velum, then there's the side on the right and the side on the left, right? And th this graph doesn't show that. But you can feel it if you go and you and you bring your your uh, shoulders back and down. Um, that's actually going to pull down your larynx this is a muscle attached to the scapula. Um, so if you pull down your back like that, you'll actually feel the, the larynx getting pulled down as well as the soft palate. And it's not a very good feeling. So this is this is the tongue down and palate uh, lifted on all sides. And then I'll show what it's like when that's uh, the soft palate's kind of down on both sides, but up vertically. Okay, so this is going to be uh, with the scapula back and down to kind of like bring down the soft palate and the larynx. Um, you don't have, like, there are many ways in which your soft palate will droop in response to a lot of different things. This is just one of them. Um, I don't like this sound, but you know, maybe you do. So here it is. I, I kind of hate that. I don't like how it feels. I don't like how it sounds, right? Let's give it a listen. Right. To me, that just I, sounds I kind of really dull, right? So what I like to do is I like to make sure that my soft palate's really lifted and that the tongue is wide, but, but back, um, at least for throat bass if I want a lower sound, right? So you can tell how your soft palate can be lifted on both sides actually using an inhale K snare. That that lifting in, in the roof of your mouth, that's the soft palate lifting, right? So we can do that as a start to kind of feel where we're at. Like a didgeridoo, it's so fun. And in particular, so that middle part was actually really, really resonant. And what happened there was I was just able to lift my soft palate and keep my tongue wide successfully. So that's what you want to do. Ideally, is you want to find like the resonance. Um, some people say certain vowels, like in a lot of tutorial videos, like go this vowel. Um, the vowel that is uh, optimal for finding resonance resonance is completely dependent on pitch. Um, there's actually a famous pedagogue who has like a giant chart of like every note that a human can sing and the vowels that are ideal, uh, in those, uh, frequency ranges. I don't like to do that <laughs> for, I think it's just obnoxious and tedious. I much prefer what I'm doing here, which is I, I bring up the spectrogram and I kind of play with what I'm doing physically. And then I have the sort of visual feedback as well. Uh, so with that in mind, actually, let me, let me, uh, show you all the, the free one. Okay, so for this, I just brought up, um, I, I searched uh, spectrogram free, and then the first one for me that came up was Academo. Um, the settings that I like to use, I like to use blue. I guess it doesn't really matter what color you use. Um, and then I really like to have the settings low, um, because if it's high, look at how much information I have to kind of glean. That's a little much, right? To kind of parse through. So I like to use low, and I personally I like to use blue because I, don't, I think it's like easier to see against the black. And so you can, you can use the spectrogram here the exact same way that the other one was used. Right, you can kind of see all of this, all of what that does. Um, and that's a great way to play with this uh, resonance thing that the throat bass is, and it's super cool. While a spectrogram can tell us a lot about frequencies and how to use and adjust vowels in order to maximize and change your sound, there is another element to this, and that's voice type, or put more accurately, 
the size of the vocal track. A lot of people think that voice classification is some sort of scientific thing, and it's, it's not. It's very far from it. The idea of voice classification comes from uh, a German system called the Fach system, which is useful in that it's a conversation starter. Uh, where am I going to start with this student? What is the directions we can go in? And it's also useful for casting choirs and operas, but it's not that great outside of that context. Think of how many people have freaky voices, like Mariah Carey. Are we really going to try to put a, a name to all of the craziness that she can do? Or are we instead going to look at her specific vocals and learn to appreciate specifically what we can do and not the other way around? One of the ways we can think of voice types is the way we think about violin, violoncello. These instruments have incredibly wide, wide ranges, but they specifically do well in a certain range. So all this is to say that even though the size of the vocal folds matter, in the context of throat bass, the actual size of the vocal track matters far more than the size of the vocal folds, and dog, you're absolutely killing me here. And this is because it's not the actual vocal folds that make the sound, it's the false folds. And so when the false folds are doing their thing and they're rattling, which is how we make throat bass, what's affected is the length of the vocal track. Think bowing a cello, bowing a bass, right? That's the equivalent of the rattling on the vocal folds, right? That's going to give us the pitch. But the resonance is, is going to be decided almost entirely based on the size of the violin, cello, viola, bass. And so the same thing is true for humans. Anyway, I, I hope you liked this video. Um, yeah, I, I spent time on this one. <laughs> uh, and I have fun medic making it. So if this sort of thing is uh, something you all enjoy, uh, let me know. Um, I would like to do more th of these when I get around to it. These usually don't get a lot of views, these ones. Not any more than the, the straight up react. So, But, you know, every now and then I want to do something I like. So, happy holidays. Okay, I'm prepared.